Coastal Storm Nation. We down at Westpac down in OC again with Mark Baker. Today we are going to be talking about the new harsh reality and we're going to be comparing it to a few balls that have just come out so that you can kind of see where it might stack up in your bag. Uh, we got a few of the guys over. We're going to be talking about uh, some different techniques and things that you can use when using these balls as well. When the best time to use them, when the worst time to use them might be. And uh, we'll get Mark's intake on that too. So come on, let's check them out. So, what are we doing here with these strong, solid ASIM balls that I don't even know when I'm going to use it. I know it's got to be for heavy oil, but... Well, you're in luck today because I got plenty of heavy oil on my lanes. Okay. So, at the Westpac Training Center, my typical house shot, 27 mils, 42 feet, but only 8 to 1 ratio. I don't have a lot of built-in free hook. Lane 1 has a lot of hang right of 5. Now, lane 1 has just been freshly oiled, so they're going to play a little farther right. For lane two, I've already given a couple lessons today. They're gonna to be closer to third arrow, but I can't wait to see this harsh reality. I've heard great things. Just watching them warm up. This is a really, really strong ball. But here's the difference, dude, since you were here last time. That's way better, but look at this. That's what everybody in the world's looking for. Well, you don't have your thumb in the ball. That's why you do it. It's just like bowling like a two-hander. So if you look at the ball as the earth, a typical one-hander with their thumb in try to get their fingers below the equator. Two-handers or bowlers without their thumb in the ball, they're trying to get their hand down, their fingers down by Antarctica. That allows you to roll the ball half a turn of the earth for free. And there you go. You don't really turn your hand that much, but look at all the ball shape you get because you're throwing it from the bottom of the ball, not the middle in the ball. That's actually more important if you're on the inside or outside of the ball, it's that you're on the bottom and that's why two-handers and people without their thumb in the ball can make the ball hook so much. It's where you're on the bottom of the swing. When you come around it too much, your ball actually goes really, really straight, or it gets to the dry too soon, it overhooks. Mm -hmm. So if you watch the best bowlers, you see their ball hooks. I mean, obviously the most common one is Tackett right now. EJ throws maybe the best release of all time. He's barely turning it. His hand never goes past that little magic horseshoe he puts up there mm -hmm. at the end, that little thing right there. That's where EJ gets to, but he's got the ability to he turns it, it goes, his hand is always going more forward it than is it is going it. around it. Mm -hmm. So his momentum is always greater than his rotation. When people see him bowl, especially on TV, and you see how much it hooks, it's beyond cool. As an ex-pro, I love watching EJ's ball. Like, I wish my ball did, still did that, <laughs> or ever did that. But everybody sees it as this. I want to turn a ball like EJ Tackett. No, EJ gets it going forward with rotation. His rotation never supersedes his momentum. I think most amateurs get that wrong. They want to see it hook. You turn a doorknob, you roll a bowling ball. You're right. And that's what I've realized in the difference in the tilt. When my tilt is more forward and it's not as you know high, I'm actually able to get a better read on the lane. And the ball reacts so much better. Right. Well, here, hold this. Let's look at EJ Tackett. EJ Tackett's break points usually between 43 and 47 feet, between 9 and about 2. So because his break point's so deep all the time, no matter what condition he bowls on, if the 1-3 sits like that, when EJ's ball comes in, EJ's pins sit like this. His pocket is as wide as you can make it. Who would be next at that? It would be Jason Belmonte in his prime. His pocket was wider. Why do you think they carry so many 10 pins, so many off, off hits, especially where the messenger head pin gets a 10? Because they turn the ball later, their reaction is later. So they're pinned, they make the 1-3 look wider. So if you make your break point too soon, or if you come around it and it hooks early or it doesn't hook, in essence, you're making the 1-3 very, very narrow. That's your flat 10s, your 2 8 10s, and 3 6 10s. That means you have the wrong ball in your hand. That's the easiest way I explain it. If you look at it from the pins point of view, they like how Belmonte and Simonson and Tackett and O'Neill's ball look. They make the 1-3 the widest. And all thing, they all have the same thing in common. Their balls are all rolling this way when they come off the spot. None of them are rolling this way. And that's where the amateurs get confused, trying to make it hook by hooking it. Those guys make it hook by rolling it. So how much different are you going to play this lane? I'm going to move three boards right, four boards right. Your target? Uh, probably the six. I like it. Let's see it. We have a bowler in the midst, <laughs> but that's how bowling works. So for those of you at home, when you go bowl league or you bowl tournaments and you expect the lanes to be the same, they never are. 
I am the only person in oils and lanes here at the Westpac Training Center. I oil them with a half hour of each other. They're playing about seven boards different. The left lane always plays tighter. The right lane always looks back from the gutter better. I'm the only one that does them. I put in the oil. I make the mix for the cleaner. You should expect in league your lanes to always play slightly different. I only oil one lane a day and it plays different every day. Where you slide and where you hit is going to predicate where your ball goes. So your ball is going to hit 14, that means you're going to slide somewhere around 27, 28. You sit on 29. Where you slide and where your ball hits here will tell me if it's going to go to the right spot down lane. It's really not up to you. True. If you would have slid on 23 and hit that target, you'd have gone Brooklyn. Yeah. If you'd have slid on 32, hit that target, you would have washed out or 2, 4, 8, 10. Yeah. Where you slide might be the most important thing to bowling compared to where you hit if you want your ball to that right spot down lane. And something you taught me, where you slide isn't necessarily where you start. So you got to pay attention to your drift, too. Very, very few bowlers have a zero drift. Mm -hmm. The only two, there's three I know of that are really good. Norm Duke, Chris Barnes, and Barry Asher. Okay. They actually slide where they start and hit what they look. Everybody else has different numbers. So let's use this example right here. So you slid on 28 and you hit 14. So if I was your doubles partner and I was bowling with you, my numbers are always four and three. Mm -hmm. That means I drifted four and I missed by three. Mm -hmm. So I would stand on 24, I would look at 11, I would hit 28 mm -hmm. and go over 14. Yeah, mine's four and four. <laughs> but you have to know your numbers because it's more important where you slide than where you start. Everybody drifts. People that tend to hook it drift left. People like to throw it straight, tend to drift right. So everybody has their own unique combination. Right. And, and as a coach, if you drift less than seven or eight going left, I don't say much, but if you drift more than five going right, it's very, very hard to play third arrow. Because people that slide that drift more than five right have a hard time sliding left to 25. People that drift a lot left, like you, mm -hmm. don't like playing, don't like sliding right at 20. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to bowling. People that drift left like to play inside. Yeah. People that drift right like to play outside. Mm -hmm. That's just how bowling works. So let's see the comparison then to where I threw that ball there to over here. Um, what do you I drift? What I do was, you drift? Five? Yeah, four. So 23, four. so stand on 18. 18. Got it right at the tape. And I on did that lane, right. it never gets back. Yeah. But that's the purpose of the tape down lane. Mm -hmm. It's feedback. You need to know that that shot missed right. I did. Right. And that's good information to have so that you don't so make it more than once. I would right, leave my eyes any place, mm -hmm. but I'd try to stay behind him more. Okay. That ball had too much rotation. I got on the side unit. of it. I felt that. You got to roll the ball, guys. So now we're at 17. And I'm aiming probably six, seven, right? Yeah, six, seven, eight. That'll work. So that time you slid on 23 mm -hmm. and you hit, at, uh, went through 11, break point 7.5. Amazing. And no, I took it's just math. <laughs> it's just math. It's all geometry at a certain point. You know, even to a bowler, though, that bowls a lot, it still fascinates me sometimes how consistent what we do actually is. Especially and the shots at work. Exactly. Because it really is math. Everybody's mm -hmm. math is kind of the same. Yeah. I mean, if you slide on 22, 23, and you hit 11, it's going to feed to the tape. Mm -hmm. Shot before that, you slid on 25, Angle and you hit two. 9, the ball hit 3 down lane. Mm -hmm. It's just math. Mm -hmm. So everybody has to learn their math. You need to learn mm -hmm. your drift and your miss. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to learn your drift and your miss, I learned by a guy named Larry Matthews back in the late 80s, Northern California, a really good coach. Stand on 18, look at 10. Try to walk straight, try to hit second arrow. Do it for 10 times and have somebody else write down where you slide and where you hit. So when I did 28, I did 18 and 10, I slid on 22 every shot and I hit 12, 13 every ball. Mm -hmm. So I knew my drift was four left and my miss was three left. So that way, if I see somebody bowling good and they're sliding on 20 and they're hitting 10, I stand on 16 and I look seven, I'm lined up in one shot. Yeah. The easiest way to get lined up in bowling is to find somebody else that throws it like you and just slide where they slide and hit where they hit. Or you could get a coach. <laughs>
and I can do the math for you. <laughs> and he can do the math for you. For me to come you. down and watch the bowl league, that gets real expensive. I learned, though, because of you showing me that I drifted four boards because I had no idea. And it was, I was trying to do what you told me. I was like, all right, I'm going to try to hit his mark. And as in doing that, you made me aware you weren't even standing in the right place. Well, everybody, everybody gets very, very hung up on where they I mean. You watch them, you watch bowlers, and they're so exact. I mean, they get their, they're like they're digging in. <laughs> I mean, like it's like playing. a batter in the batter's well, box. You know, they're digging you know? in there, and they, you know, they got the, I mean, and they get the ball, and they, hold on, please. Now, I'm not trying to, if this is you at home, I'm not making fun of you. I just yes, don't understand is. you. So you give it this little one, and you give it the dig, and then they give it this one. <laughs> the I mean, LeBron. You don't throw the ball in your stance. You can start this way, you can start this way, never start that way. So they just kind of do all those different things. So let's see how I do. Standing on 16, if I look at 7, I'll probably drift around 20. Oh, I'm old. <laughs> Hit 10. And that's still why I'm retired ball. and I give up for a living. <laughs> because the wrist is no good and that ball spun like a top. That's embarrassing. But Tom, he hit Tom, his mark. He Tom hit Baker's his mark. in North Carolina going, damn, dude, you spun that one a lot. Dude, you are so much better than last time. He's still granted. I mean, that's uh, right between the tips. Because I like I, th I like throwing on these links because like there's a lot of oil here because like typically in the house the house alley that we're in. So it's not that I have a lot of oil. Yeah. I don't have a lot of ratio. Yeah. So ratio is how much oil to how much dry. Yeah. I only have eight to one, and because this is a training center, I didn't want you to come here and people that take lessons at the Westpac Training Center. I didn't want you to get a false sense of how you threw it. When you throw it that good you should get that reaction. Yeah. But if you kind of whiff it on the bottom and you get it right of the tape, I don't want that ball to suck up and knock out the 10 and you think, oh my God, I'm throwing it good. Yeah. When in reality it wasn't, but my lanes are so easy, that's what happens. Yeah. That's why a lot of bowlers bowl good in one center and they never leave it. Yeah. But if you want to be able to bowl anywhere you want, you got to be able to hit a target. So yeah. the reason why my, my, my lanes are tight because I'm eight to one ratio and I don't have a lot of free hook. A lot of centers don't put a lot of oil between five and 10. So you throw the ball there and it hooks off your hand. I put a little bit of oil there. For one, I give a lot of lessons during a day, typically seven or eight. I don't want to oil them every lesson. Yeah. So I want, because a lot of bowlers want to play third, fourth arrow. Some bowlers want to play them when they're tight. So I try to adjust for everybody. But because my ratios are only eight to one and there's no free hook, you do play farther right here than other places. Yeah. But it also makes you understand your release because now as you move right, you're rolling it more be much better. So when the ball got to the tape, it looked exactly like it did on that lane from third arrow. Yeah. So the back of the lane, the ball rolled the same. Yeah. That's my theory on coaching. I'm not charging enough for lessons. <laughs> I got to raise my rates, baby. Woo! <laughs> Woo! You think you got better? I hope. Lay down. 15-2, 15-2. Arrows, 0.3 boards difference. Break point, 0.4. He's wow. playing out, so the Baker box can start early when you play zone one. Two feet difference. Slant speed off his hand, same. A little more entry angle. Look at that, the average speed. And over here, wow. the shot time, I put this up here for one reason. Earl Anthony is the greatest bowler who ever lived. Earl Anthony trained on the stopwatch. That's the stopwatch numbers. 2.48 to 2.49. Earl could throw them all between five hundredths of a second. So when you do it like that, Earl Anthony from above is going, hey man, that was a pretty good shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got the big solid ASM in the harsh, and we got the absolute power as well, which is also strong ball, solid ASM. But two completely different balls, believe it or not, different shapes. So we're going to see how they look on this lane. This lane is hooking a little bit more than the other one, so you'll actually really be able to see a reaction out of this. And who knows, maybe they're even too strong for what we're throwing on, but we're going to find out. <laughs> So you assumed it was going to hook an arrow more, and it pretty much played them the same. It's a different motion off the spot, but they're not that different in the front. Mm -hmm. So throw that ball again and go back to where you throw the other one. Yep. Remember, it's going to pick up sooner because it's so strong, but it's not going to bounce like the, like the idol did. You're right. But I see that all the time. People go to a stronger cover, and they think it's going to hook more in the back. That's kind of, it can't hook both places. You actually missed that way right, and it still didn't go high. Right, but that's what those balls, they're smoother on the back. Right. see that now. When they say that, like, the ball's stronger than another ball, in 
a lot of people's misconception of the ball stronger is that it's going to hook harder. It hooks. Balls that tend to be stronger tend to hook sooner. Sooner. So that's why they're good on a lot of oil. They pick up so your ball will read. Yeah. But once the lanes, when you, once you get some dry to the right and the back ends are hooking, the stronger ball sometimes reads so soon, it looks like it's weak down lane, it just hooked too soon. Whereas, you know, 45 minutes earlier on this lane, that ball was great because there was enough oil to get it down, let the ball do exactly what it was supposed to on the back of the lane. Yeah. That's a tricky, there's not a universal way of saying it. Yeah. People say a stronger ball, I tend to think it's the cover stock, it's going to pick up sooner. Because some of the balls that hook the most on the back have weak cores, but because they have, you know, the, the cover stocks are different, they get the ball longer, so you see a much more pronounced move on the back, That's like you did with the idle. Sometimes is how some right. and weaker balls still move. Well. Every ball reacts to every bowler a little bit different. That's why your arsenal is unique to you. Yeah. Or when you're throwing it good, they all work. The harsh reality in average league, especially if you have a lot of free hook, you would have to be fairly speed dominant, or if your rev rate's a little bit low, this is going to be a, a must ball for you. Now you've got a high rev rate and you throw a medium speed, in league, this may not be your best ball, it might be right to the optimum, but if you bowl on any type of sports shot and you've got any kind of rev rate or any kind of speed, the harsh reality should definitely be one of the first balls you try. Because right now I'm seeing it, the nice part I'm seeing it, it's not overhooking and it's not burning up. Yeah. So you guys are going to a lane that's tight, a lane that's been broken down, then you guys moved in, then you move back, and that harsh reality is working on everything. So that's kind of how when I recommend a ball, I'm with, I'm with the, the Storm brands, and when I recommend a ball, I tend to usually wait until I see five different bowlers of my students all make one ball work from different parts of the lane, then I start referring it. I don't tend to refer balls that are very, very unique to just the one style. <laughs> yeah. So when I see five, like today, I've seen four different bowlers make that harsh reality work good from two different lanes, different parts of the lane, sliding different, all the same break point. That's going to be a really good ball for a lot of people. I think so, for too. For a strong ball, it gets through the front really clean. Really, really clean. That's, it's not... that's, and, it, and it recovers, but it doesn't burn up. Okay, well, so, so, so let's I, see that. If I were still mm -hmm. bowling, I would probably have two because I was very speed dominant. Okay, okay, okay. As you saw, when I throw it, my mm -hmm. ball didn't want to pick up. I throw yeah. it hard. So that would probably be, I'd have two of those. And you would drill them differently? A little bit different. Have a little, one has a little more shine on the other. But that balls that I can throw hard that I know are going to pick up, mm -hmm. for a guy that's, especially the guys that bowled back in the day, we had a pretty good rev rate. Now we've gotten older and father time's undefeated. Mm -hmm. I can still throw it hard, but my rev rate's not very good. Not so I need balls that are super strong that I can, I'm only good at one thing, throwing it hard. <laughs> yeah. Trying to roll it, trying to, you know, all the different okay. releases. I don't have that. Okay. I got basically a half a release left. And I can hit a target and throw it pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So I want balls that are strong so I can throw them even harder. So that's more cohesive to somebody that's like an athlete that just is coming into the game. They, is that why solids are probably better yeah. balls for them to throw? And then, you know, they, it, how is your personality? My mm -hmm. personality is pretty hyper. Mm -hmm. So when I want one, I'm never going to throw it slow. Mm -hmm. So I want a ball that picks up that makes me throw it harder. Mm -hmm. If I throw it slow, it's too much. Good. I want balls that make <laughs> me throw it hard because I'm only good at one thing. Yeah. Now, if you're good at throwing, you're bringing your speed down and you're soft, I would definitely be here. That ball's probably going to pick up too soon. Mm -hmm. Then you might actually the absolute power would be a really good ball for that. And that's actually what we're going to try next. So I'm so, curious so part to of your, see. Part mm -hmm. of picking balls has to match some of your personality as a human. Mm -hmm. You know, balls, all because it's the ball, yeah. if that doesn't fit how you bowl, you mm -hmm. can't throw it. They say the way you do one thing is how you do everything. So it shows up everywhere. Right. And so that's, yeah. I would, if I still bowl a lot, I'd be throwing gems and I'd be throwing realities. Mm -hmm. Balls that are stru super strong, mm -hmm. so I can throw it hard. Yeah. And not try to make my ball hook pick up. I want my ball to pick up in spite of me. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how the power matches up. So you have to know yourself pretty well, to be, I think, to, be, to make your arsenal work best for you. Okay. So this is also another solid ASIM, the power. It is, I think the diff is a little bit... So far, that's been the best ball in the training center the last three weeks. Okay. Like 15 different people have brought that in, mm -hmm. and they've all made a strike. Everybody's So don't good. be the first one to miss. All right. <laughs> sounds good. We're going to see what happens. I got to know where to stand first. There you go. I love that ball. That's my favorite so yep. far. That's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. That could be a really good benchmark ball. Wait, it's mine so I'm right seeing now. a bunch of different styles, a bunch of different rev rates, mm -hmm. all throwing that ball anywhere from 8 to 25. 
and they're all having unbelievably good success. And they're all walking back. Everybody's walking back going, I love how that ball rolls. <laughs> yeah. So when you get a bunch of different people, young, old, two-handed, one-handed, and they're all saying that. Something's got to be right. <laughs> when you, I, to me, you have to have a, a pretty wide range of the balls to work. That's up. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yes, sir. Oh, better. Plenty. Mark, in your experience, what, what would you say is like a deciding factor of like when to throw, let's just say two balls, same same margin, same dip, right? What's a difference maker in the game where it's like a symmetrical to an ASIM? Like what would be a, a, the best case scenario for like an ASIM ball to be thrown down the lane? I don't really go by the ASIM sim thing too much. I just go by what my eyes see. Yeah. And the one that picks up the easiest that you can you can throw firm. Most bowlers miss throwing it hard. Yeah. So the ball that picks up the easiest that goes through the pins pretty good. I always want people to throw that. Now whether that's ASIM or sim, that there's that's such a wide. There is no box to put somebody in. You should only throw ASIM. You should only throw sim. Yeah, if you look at the higher rev rate bowlers when they're bowling on certain things on tour. They have very specific balls for how the lanes play, but that's a lot of reps and a lot of sample size. Yeah. The average bowler is going to bowl league at the same center. Like in a situation like this, this could easily be game one in league. I don't want to move too much. Game two, oh, I had a bunch of two-enters on my pair. Move in game three. <laughs> now that would be a three-ball arsenal for league right there. Yeah, I agree. Or, hey, they hook too much in league. You start with here. I start with here with smooth. I bowl pretty good the first two. Got about 490 turning. I go four pin, three, six, ten, five left. Look around it, then I shoot 770. I shot 270. Well, you have. Oh, man, if you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen.